Previously, on MHA texts. Oh no 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 no. No no no, it's can't. There's no way. I I didn't oh my god I can't have dropped that book I in front of Cochin. Meanwhile, at Bakugo's house, our blonde-haired porcupine was blushing up a storm, looking through the notebook that Deku had dropped earlier. To be continued. And now, for the second part. As always, please respect others' ships as long as they are legal and safe. Deeply blushing faces of embarrassment as he holds the open notebook in front of him. Alright, this is. I mean, why does the nerd? Who is this dynamite guy? His powers are very similar to mine, down to an almost uncanny amount of detail of my own, so. Alright, the nerd wrote some fanfiction stories and put me in them alongside himself and other heroes, but why would he? Bakugo pauses then, one of the story's titles catching his attention, a morning surprise. Reading it, it turns out to be the dream that Deku had that morning, even leaving off at the same point. Of course, Bakugo had no idea about this dream, but the scene did vaguely remind him of what happened at the school earlier. Well damn it, I suppose that explains why he acted like that before. Still though, I have questions for that nerd. Bakugo closed up the book then, almost slamming it and tucking it into his jacket before heading out of the house, practically sprinting down the street to get to Deku's. Meanwhile, speaking of Deku, he was having a forlorn panic attack. S surely Kojin wouldn't open the book and read it, right? Like he wouldn't care about what I write in my notebooks, right? I mean, he doesn't even like, like me, so why would he bother reading it? Our poor broccoli boy was sitting on his bed, rocking back and forth with his legs hugged to his chest, eyes wide and pupils dilated. He almost jumped up and threw his ceiling as he heard the doorbell ring suddenly, gulping a bit as he quickly got up and left his room to answer the door. When he opened it, he just about slammed it in Bakugo's face. The only thing stopping him was Bakugo's foot keeping the door open. We need to talk. Now. He said simply, a light blush dusting his cheeks as he pushed past Deku, pulling out and holding up the notebook as he entered the kitchen. KK Kochin. Aye aye. It's not what it will look like, I swear. I didn't. I mean I'm not. Damn it nerd, just shut the door and get the hell in here already. Do you want the entire complex to hear about this? Bakugo grumbled a little, shaking his head and placing a hand on his face as Deku gasped, shutting the door quickly and slowly approaching him. I... I'm sorry. The what? The... the book? W.H. What I wrote. I mean... Why you want to talk, I'm guessing you already read it. And in guessing you now hate me and think I'm weird and and and. Deku was about to start mumbling away plenty of self-deprecating things, feeling ashamed of that book he started writing in now. However, he didn't have the chance as Bakugo swiftly stood up and put a finger up to his lips, silencing him. No. Deku just blinks a couple of times. N. No? No. What? None of that, no putting yourself down. I did enough of that beep when we were growing up, so don't you dare do that to yourself, idiot. I shouldn't have done that, and you shouldn't do it to yourself, got it? Deku winced a bit at that, taking a small step backwards with wide eyes at the surprisingly protective tone coming from him. I... I mean well. Gee got it. Deku stood there for a moment, blushing bright as can be, stomach full of butterflies from how nervous he is. Bakugo wants to say more on that, to apologize profusely for his past actions. He gets about as far as opening his mouth the word hey barely leaving his lips before. A.A. anyways. What a, what is that you need again? Deku asked this with eyes tightly closed, biting his lower lip as he braced for the inevitable questioning about the book, questions he was sure wouldn't be kind. Bakugo closed his mouth, internally sighing a bit before holding up the book again. So, you wrote this book? I, I did. And I'm guessing all the characters so far aren't so coincidentally named after those we know and other heroes, right? Th that's right. In that case, this dynamite character, who is he based off of? Deku gulped and screamed internally at that question, wanting to curl up underneath a rock for the next decade or two instead of answering. H. He's based off of. Off of you actually. Deku braces for the worst, hands over his face as he prepares to say he's so sorry and to placate a soon-to-be angry Bakugo. Hmm. You did a good job, keep it up. The name's not too bad either honestly, I kind of like it myself. May even use it as my own hero name. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. 
Please don't murder me. Huh? K. Cochin? Deku stopped pleading for his life upon realizing what he said, hands slowly lowering from his face as he looked at him in shock. You. You really mean it? You're. Not mad or anything? Like. At all? Bakugo just grins a bit, handing the book back over to the other boy, who gladly takes it. Bakugo takes a step forward, taking a deep breath and closing his eyes as he prepares to say what's on his mind. No, I'm not mad. In fact, I. Really beeping like what I read in there. It's well written, well balanced, and. Honestly? Bakugo grins and shakes his head, lightly blushing now. It. Has given the motivation to finally speak up. You see nerd, I. Actually really like you. Like, like like you, I mean. We've been together since we were little, and. I treated you horribly over the years. I said horrible things, did unspeakable things to you, I made so many mistakes. There's a lot I have to make up for, I know that. But, if you would have me, and based upon what I read I might know the answer to this already. But if you would go out with me, I would like to do what I can to make up for what I've done. Deku was shocked by Bakugo's words, completely taken by surprise at what Bakugo said. Wakochin, you don't have to make up for. You're damn wrong nerd, because I have a lot to make up for. And there's nothing you can say that will make me think otherwise, got it? Deku gulped and quickly nodded his head at that, biting his lower lip as he thought for a minute. Though given the rate that his mind was going now, it didn't take him long to come to the conclusion he did. He mainly just wanted to make Bakugo sweat for a bit, a tad bit of messing with him now for all of this worry today. I would like to go out with you too, Kochin. I really want to go out with you honestly. Bakugo let out the breath that he had been holding, relief washing over his body at what Deku said. Smiling a bit, the blushing, blonde-haired boy held open his arms to his new boyfriend for a hug, the green-haired boy accepting it and hugging him. The two embraced for several minutes, just relaxing in each other's embrace when suddenly, the door opened up. The two's eyes went wide open in an instant, their heads turning to look at the door to see Inka Midoriya, who was now watching her son hugging the blonde-haired, explosive porcupine known as Bakugo, who was hugging Deku in return. To be continued? Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Do you want to see a part 3 of this and see how Inku handles finding out about this in such an unexpected way? If so, let us know down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit the bell icon, and comment down below your favorite part of the video and anything else you want to see in the next one. Goodbye for now.